my name is Dano, and welcome to Rule Your Sound, the place for songwriters, producers, and music lovers to learn tips and tricks from today's top artists so that we can build out our library of ideas and help take your own sound and your own songwriting to the next level. I am so excited to share today's episode with you. This episode was based on a recent conversation that I had with Lizzie the Gifted on his Music Mastery podcast, where we talked about how songwriters don't need to be experts in music theory, but if you don't know anything about about music theory, you are at a disadvantage as a songwriter, and that's not a great place to be in. This is part one of a two-part series, and the entire series is going to focus on the tools that you need to be able to hear something in your head or hear something on the radio or Spotify and be able to translate that onto your instrument. This video is going to focus primarily on the tool, which is Solfege, and the next video is going to show you how to apply that to be able to do that translation of what you're hearing in your head onto your instrument. Before I dive in, I just want to really reiterate why it is so important for songwriters to know just a little bit of theory. The first reason is that when you want to write a song and you sit down at your piano or your guitar and you're ready to go, if you don't have a good understanding of what popular chord progressions are in the genre that you're trying to write, you are going to be guessing and checking until you find something that sounds good. Whereas if you know what a few really good chord progressions are in your genre, you can sit down, start playing them, and bam, have a song ready to go within a few minutes, as opposed to doing the guess and check way of writing a song, which is going to take you a lot longer. The second reason is it's really hard to learn from other artists if you can't break down and analyze what they're doing. So if you're driving in your car and you hear a song come on the radio and you're like, oh my god, gosh, I love this song. When you're in the car, you can listen to the chord progression and say, okay, these are the chord progressions that they're doing. When I go home, I'm going to try writing a song uh, using similar chords. And when you sit down at your piano or your guitar, you're going to know how to do that. The third reason is that if you're covering a song, you don't need to rely on guitar tabs online, which are so often wrong to be able to play it. You can hear the song and then just play it on your guitar, your piano, or whatever instrument. Being able to do that is really going to elevate your musicianship and make it so much faster to learn new songs. So with that said, I really want to reiterate that you do not need to be a theory expert. If you're writing pop or rap or R&B or hip hop, you really don't need to be an expert in jazz theory, although it is fun to dabble in it a little bit. But I promise that if you practice some of the things that we talk about in this video and the follow-up video, you are gonna see a noticeable improvement in your songwriting ability. So with that said, Let's do some theory. So in this video, we are gonna talk all about Solfege, which is a really important tool for you to be able to translate what you're hearing onto your instrument. Solfege assigns a syllable to each scale degree in the major scale. I'm sure that you've heard the Sound of Music song, Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun. The first word in each phrase is a Solfege syllable and they sing it on the right note. So if you don't know anything about Solfege, listen to that song and it'll help you get familiar with the Solfege syllables. But if you're familiar with the major scale, all it is are these syllables for each note. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. I promise I'm going to show you all about solfege and teach you the basics, but the reason that this is so important is once you get familiar with these syllables, you can start singing any song with these syllables. So for example, Mary had a little lamb. Mi, re, do, re, mi, mi, mi. And because each of these syllables translate to a scale degree, now you know that it's the third, second, and first scale degree to write that song. So three, two, one, two, three, three, three. And you can play that in any single key that you want. So the moral of the story is that if you can sing it in solfege, you can play it on your instrument. So let's break it down step by step so you can get really familiar with solfege. If you are new to solfege, there are three exercises that I want you to really ingrain in your brain and get super familiar with. The first one is just singing all the syllables on a major scale, ascending and descending. Ready? Let's sing it together. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. The second and third exercises are gonna get us more familiar with intervals because we know that not all songs are, you know, the notes aren't all next to each other. They do jump around. So you also have to get familiar with what some of those jumps are. In the second exercise, we are gonna practice each of those intervals ascending and then descending. Ready? Let's sing it together. Do, 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 re, do, do, mi, do, do, fa, do, do sol do do la do do ti do 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 ti do do la do do sol do do fa do do mi do do re do 
Do, do, do. Awesome job. And in the last exercise, we're gonna start getting familiar with some chords. So we're gonna start with a one chord, a four chord, and a five chord. If you don't know what those chord numbers mean, don't worry, it won't stop you from doing this exercise, and we're gonna go over that in the next video. But for now, just to get you more familiar with it, let's sing the one chord. I'll go first, and you can repeat after me. Do, mi, so, do, so, mi, do. Do, mi, so, do, so, mi, do. Awesome, let's go ahead to a four chord. Do, fa, la, do, la, fa, do. Do, fa, la, do, la, fa, do. Awesome, and again, let's do a five, seven chord. Ti, fa, so, ti, so, fa, ti. Ti, fa, so, ti, so, fa, ti. Great, and let's round it out, go back to one. Do, mi, so, do, so, mi, do. Do, mi, so, do, so, mi, do. Awesome job. So now you have a few exercises to try. If you get really familiar with them and they start to get easy, just search on YouTube for some solfege exercises and I promise there are a ton of resources out there for you. So now that you have some of those exercises and you're more familiar with solfege, I'm gonna walk you through one of my favorite free resources online to help build your ear and practice this on your own. But before we get over there, I just want you to either take a screenshot or write down this chart right here. This tells you which scale degrees correspond Bond with each solfege syllable so that in your head if you sing do mi do you know that that's a third or you hear do sol do you know that that's a fifth that's gonna be really important to have on hand as we go into some of these practice exercises okay so first head over to tonedear.com you'll see under ear training practice that there is a bunch of exercises you want to click on the first one that says intervals right where it says intervals it's on simple that means that of all the intervals we're only gonna work on the the third, the fifth, and the octave. I love this website because once you pass that level, they will keep adding in another interval so that you can start slow and start building the more familiar you get with hearing these intervals. I would also, especially if you're a beginner and you're new to this, I would go to show advanced options and right where it says fixed root, Click that that says start with the same note for every interval. That's gonna make it easy because it's not gonna change keys on you. So do is gonna say the same. That first is gonna say the same. Once you get more familiar with this and it becomes easier, you can go on and remove that fixed root. It'll jump around a little more um, to add another layer of challenge. So let's go on to start the quiz and see how you do. What I really recommend that you do while you're working on these exercises is do not guess and check. Don't just press random buttons and hope that your ear is just gonna magically begin to recognize this. If you are not sure what it is, what the sound is, if you hear hmm, 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 and you don't know what that is, sing all the solfege notes in your head. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Do, re, mi, fa, sol. Oh, there it is, sol. Mm, mm, mm. It must be a fifth. You want to think that way because if you're just guessing and checking, you're not actually building your ear and getting more familiar with each of those syllables. So one other thing that's gonna be so incredibly essential for part two of this video, when we hear songs in our head or on the radio and are able to translate them onto our instrument is that you have to be able to sing the bass line in solfege. So if you have never sung along to the bass line with songs, start doing that, just start there. Don't worry about solfege, just every song that you hear, sing the bass line, sing that bass line. And that's so important because that is gonna really help indicate what chords are playing. So when you get more familiar with just singing the bass line, see if you can figure out the solfege. And that is the key that's gonna unlock a huge array of potential for you um, and really take your songwriting and your musicianship up a ton. So I hope that this was helpful. If you need clarification on anything at all, please drop a comment. I will do my best to respond to each and every one of you. And make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss part two where we actually learn how we can apply this to songwriting. Thanks so much and see you then.